it's mating season, it's breeding season, there's chicks around, there's nests everywhere on all types of birds, but uh, we've got a couple of really big special raptors to show you this morning, so stay tuned and enjoy. Morning everyone, welcome back to Shamori Private Game Reserve. My name is Andrew. Got a really exciting episode for you today. It's mating season, it's breeding season, there's chicks around, there's nests everywhere on all types of birds, but uh, we've got a couple of really big special raptors to show you this morning, so stay tuned and enjoy. So I think one of the special things about Shamori Private Game Reserve is the diversity. Not only diversity in terrain and, and environment, but diversity in animals as well. And what I mean by that is, we're gonna go and have a look at a crowned eagle nest and hopefully see the birds on the nest. And a crowned eagle is limited to forest and woodland habitat. Uh, it's a very specific type of habitat that they specialize in and survive in. But within a short distance away, we're going to be able to go and have a look at secretary birds. Secretary birds, they need wide open grassy spaces, they're savannah birds. And I think that's one of the great things about Chamari is you can, you can go from forest to savannah to riverine to fainbos, all within uh, quite a short space of time. And it's that diversity in habitat that allows us to have such diversity in animal species here. So uh, we've moved through into this forested area, uh, quite a remote area on Shumwari, and uh, just about not even 100 meters from us on the side of a cliff over there, we've got a beautiful crowned eagle breeding pair, male and a female, that are on a nest with chicks. We're going to move through this bush over here and just get into a nice secluded little spot and just sit and watch and uh, see if we can get a good visual on them. So crowned eagle are one of your largest and heaviest eagle species in South Africa that we have. They are very specific to the habitat that they occupy and I think one of the important things that I'm going to show you today is the speciation and the specialization that these raptors can hold. In other words, we're going to look at this crowned eagle which is found in forest and woodland areas and it's perfectly adapted to hunting hyraxes, monkeys and forest dwelling antelope species, things like bushbuck, dacre and they are perfectly suited to living in a very thick wooded forest environment. Come, let's go and have a look. See that absolute massive nest in the fork of the tree over there? It is huge. Uh, and both the male and female would have spent many, many months busy building that, uh, building that nest. They are territorial. They'll occupy a, a territory for a very, very long time. They're monogamous. They stay together for years and years. If they're undisturbed, they'll stay and keep utilizing the same nest. See, it's made up of a very thick intertwined layer of the bottom part, sticks and twigs, branches in fact, I mean it's from this distance you can see it's big branches and that and all the way up and then on the inside of the nest there'll be a slightly different lining and material but otherwise it's just very thick coarse branches and twigs. It's a big eagle, it's one of our biggest heaviest eagles that we have in the region, about four kilograms and a wingspan of about 1.8 meters. It's not that massive in terms of wingspan 
but it's got very broad wings and it needs those broad wings to be able to maneuver through the trees uh, and the canopy as it's doing aerial hunting. Normally in a clutch there'll be two eggs, two chicks will hatch, but as with most raptors there's something called sibilicide where the strongest individual young chick will kill the other chick uh, and only one will survive. It's very seldom that both chicks will survive. So there she's just moved off now, headed around the side over there. She might be heading off to hunt or it might be because we're here. So let's move out and give her her space. So as you can see, as we've moved out of the forest areas in the valleys, we've come out into these open grass plains. It's perfect habitat for one of the most characteristic eagles that you can ever see. It's quite a funny, strange looking bird and you wouldn't really associate it with being an eagle, but it's, it's terrestrial, it's got long legs and it's a secretary bird. So there you can see she's sitting on top of a bush over there and that's actually the nesting platform that she's on. We're going to have a look at a little bit of behaviour and, and like I said, terrestrial, they spend their time hunting for food on the ground. They're not aerial predators, they don't swoop down and catch their prey. They walk through the grass in the fields and they, uh, they hunt mice, grasshoppers, insects, lizards and they are very well known for catching and killing snakes but it doesn't form a major part of their diet but they are very very well adapted to actually catching and killing them. So obviously two characteristic features about a secretary bird is number one the long legs which uh, give it the ability to have height as it walks through the long grass and those long legs also give it the ability to stamp on its prey to dispatch things that are trying to run away from them. Uh, they've got a very powerful forward and downward kick and then obviously, as you can see, the 10 pairs of quill feathers, the, the crest on the back of the, the head. When they do get excited or they're trying to entrap a, a prey item on the ground, that, that array of feathers, that crest will actually erect. So since the late 1980s, there's been about a 70% decline in reported sightings of secretary birds. Some of the factors that are really hampering the population of Secretary birds are things like power lines and fences, collisions where they fly into these things and kill themselves. They have quite a high mortality rate of young birds anyhow. You can see that bird is so reliant and suited for grasslands and open savannas that any time those areas get disturbed or agricultural areas get sprayed for pests, they, they're not going to be able to inhabit those areas anymore. So there are a number of conservation uh, projects in that that are going on. Uh, and indeed we're hoping to launch one here on Shamwari where, uh, where we're going to be tagging some birds and doing a monitoring process to help uh, ascertain exactly uh, numbers of birds, movements, all of that type of stuff so we can try and help with the conservation effort to protect these beautiful birds. So again, I think awesome that we were able to sit and view this, uh, this female on the nest. I, uh, I hope she's going to be successful in rearing these chicks. So what we're going to do is we're going to move off and we're going to let her carry on over there. But beautiful sightings and what an amazing morning. So one of the last little great sightings I want to show you is just uh, how resourceful birds are at uh, being able to utilize every single last little opportunity of a good nesting spot. As you can see we're going into the river line here. Generally this time of the year there would be water inside the, the river and where we're heading to now would be inaccessible. The fact that there's no water this time of the year uh, in the Bushman's River has now opened up a, a fantastic resource to, uh, to another beautiful raptor. Two beautiful little spotted eagle owlet chicks. They're eagle owls, they're not owlets, but baby owls are owlets. All rather technical when you're birding. Uh, the adult has just flown off on 
perched on that acacia over there. You can, you can see how they've utilized the side of the bank and the exposed roots uh, that ordinarily that would be underwater as the water is now cut away at the side of the bank and now that the, the river is dried out it's left this wonderfully uh, exposed bank uh, which is obviously nice and safe. It's nice and sheltered and the, the owls would have been able to make a nest up there, lay the eggs, incubate them and successfully hatch two little chicks. So those are spotted eagle owls. It's probably one of the most common owl species in South Africa besides a, a barn owl. Yeah, it's a, a medium-sized owl. It's, it's got quite long ears, what we'd call ear tufts uh, or ear horns. Uh, they're not used for hearing or anything like that, it's more for displays. It's got a wingspan of about a meter. Where we are now, the semi-wooded area, perfect habitat for it. There will be a lot of rodents moving through here. And as we know, owls are nocturnal hunters. And in this case, these owls are perfectly suited to catching uh, mice and rats at night time. Eagle owls, uh, again being a raptor, they're territorial. So the male and female will be uh, in this area and have a territory. The youngsters will be tolerated for a few months up to uh, pretty much the next breeding season where in most instances they'll be chased out by them. These guys will be fledged in about 30 to 40 days and they'll be fully fledged and dispersed into the area uh, within about four months. What an incredible sighting, absolutely beautiful. It's not very often that you get to see uh, little owlet chicks like this and it's such an amazing time of the year with all these raptors uh, busy nesting and birds busy nesting everywhere. We, we've seen crowned eagles, secretary birds and spotted eagle owls on the nest. So an amazing morning for me. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you soon. If you haven't followed us yet, Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for our next episode, and I'll see you right here at Shimori Private Game Reserve.